Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen und herzlich willkommen zu unserem heutigen Webinar mit dem Thema äh, Neuseeland. Mein Name ist Roman Berger und ich habe heute mit dabei Kate Fenton von äh, äh, Tourism New Zealand. Sie ist äh, Premium Trade Manager Europe und auch äh, Victoria Bruce Miller von äh, Fred und Mildred äh, Representation. Und äh, sie werden Ihnen heute über die luxuriösesten Lodges und Hotspots dieses wunderschönen Landes äh, erzählen. Also ich wünsche Ihnen viel Spaß auf Ihrer Reise ans andere Ende der Welt und übergebe gleich an äh, Kate Fenton. Good morning everybody, Kira, and welcome to our Tourism New Zealand uh, webinar with the, the Lobster Experience guys. We're really pleased to have your time and thank you for listening in. Uh, as Roman said, my name is Kate Fenton. I am the Premium Trade Manager for Europe and I'm here to tell you a little bit about how New Zealand is really relevant for some of your more luxurious clients, for clients that want somewhere um, to really experience um, and understand a little bit about New Zealand. Um, so I will talk you through it and then at the end of this presentation, Victoria will also talk about some of our luxury properties and give you a really good overview um, of what some of our key properties have to offer for your clients. So first, I'd just like to give you a little bit of an overview of what some of our Tourism New Zealand assets look like. This is a really important tool. We have lots of resources and assets for you to use. Uh, our training, our 100% pure New Zealand specialist program is available for you on traveltrade.newzealand. It's a really great program where you can learn much more about New Zealand. Um, if, you're, if you are really familiar, there are certain um, categories of, of, um, of modules that are relevant for hiking and cycling, and it gives you a really good overview of the destination. We also do in-market training sessions, and we have um, a fantastic NewZealand.com consumer site, which is, um, has agent listings for any of our specialists, um, and it's there for your consumers as well. The Travel Trades website looks just like this. I would really recommend you have a look at the website after this webinar, familiarize yourself, and we have lots of tools um, for you to use, and the training is located here as well. So what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about New Zealand um, and some of our luxury products. The picture here you can see is a really familiar um, and common scene that you would find with any of our um, luxury properties. We have huge amounts of space in New Zealand, which is one of our really unique selling points. And a property might look something like this with a vast amount of land um, in a very unique surrounding. And it really is the place um, where your clients can relax, um, learn, and be fully hosted um, in their New Zealand experience by the local hosts, but also get a real sense of the unique landscape in each of New Zealand's regions. And New Zealand really differs. So you must remember that New Zealand is like having 20 holidays in one. So yes, we might be at the other side of the world from Europe, but my God, when we get there, um, it really is an incredible trip. So New Zealand, if you are familiar with the um, destination, I hope some of you have um, some of the basic geography of New Zealand and we'll talk you through um, some of the luxury experiences by theme today. So we will be moving around the country, not necessarily from north to south. Um, so if you, if you do have a map available um, or on your screen, that would be great. Um, but keep this in mind, we have Auckland in our north of our North Island, Wellington in the south, our capital of the North Island, and then Christchurch and Queenstown. They're some of the key points, and obviously our main international airports as well, Auckland being the most popular gateway. Um, but we have huge amounts of domestic airports all across New Zealand. Um, so it is an incredibly easy destination to get around, whether that's be by domestic flights or by a self-drive. So please um, keep this, um, this map in mind and how easy and small New Zealand is as well, because New Zealand is actually in relative size, the same size as the United Kingdom. So although there is an incredible amount to experience and do, uh, the country is actually very small and easy to get around. Uh, one term we like to use when we talk about uh, luxury products in New Zealand is that everything is quite close. Um, obviously, you can use very efficient ways of transfers and travel like helicopters, small planes, our domestic air um, service, and also um, just driving from place to place. Um, in distances, is actually relatively easy um, and small in comparison to some of the other um, destinations around the world. So um, whether you're by the beach, whether you're sailing, you can be walking in an incredible landscape. Um, two minutes later, 
Um, you can be flying across to a mountaintop um, or on a glacier. So New Zealand changes quite rapidly throughout a journey. Um, and for luxury clients that have a slightly better budget um, and can move around the country um, quite efficiently, New Zealand really is a place to have some seriously incredible experiences. New Zealand is also a place of a beautiful nation of people that are incredibly proud of their own destination, proud of their home. We have our Kiwi Manakitanga, which basically translates as hospitality, and we welcome people to our homes um, and our, our places and our unique, unique landscapes with incredible pride. Um, a really um, incredible thing to include in any client's itinerary is um, a little essence of our Maori culture as well. So there are some key hotspots to include that, which we'll come back to later. And as I mentioned earlier, a typical landscape of some of our luxury properties can look like this. We would have um, the options of private chefs. They are small um, villas, maybe for four to you know 22 rooms maximum. Um, some of the, the, the best lodges in New Zealand um, are, are purposely small, but on incredible amounts of space. So it really is a destination where you can immerse yourself in the local surroundings and um, be very far from other humans, which is these days very appealing. We call New Zealand a bit of a, a natural playground because we are full of natural beauty, um, natural elements, and Mother Nature at her very, very best. Nearly every landscape in the world um, the world has to offer you can be found in New Zealand. Um, so for anybody with um, certain special interests or just wanting to really get an understanding of our country, um, we say it's a bit of a playground to get around and move around. So what we'll do is we'll talk a bit um, about a few key themes of New Zealand and some really top tips of what to do if you have clients that um, can spend a little bit more money on uh, really immersing themselves in some unique experiences in New Zealand. Um, and that will be by helicopter and by sailing and, and certain themes throughout the presentation. We'll start with um, some helicopter and scenic rides. What you'll find on these slides is that you've got maybe a couple of top tips of um, our key experiences. Um, in New Zealand. And I can't stress enough how important it is if you have clients um, with a, a, a good budget to get them in the air. New Zealand is a phenomenal place to experience from the air, from helicopters, from scenic flights and small planes, even parachuting or gliding or something like that. I mean, this, this landscape changes um, beneath your eyes. So it really is an incredible way to experience. If I was to pick one um, key experience in the North Island, um, I would go for White Island. Um, if any of you are familiar with the Bay of Plenty, um, it's probably about a 20 minute ride from uh, Rotorua or maybe a 40 minute heli journey from Lake Taupo. Um, a helicopter trip to White Island, um, you can even do it before breakfast um, from, your, from your luxury property. They will fly you out towards White Island, which you'll see in the, the um, north side of that map there. Tiny island in the middle of the ocean. You'll land on the crater lake, um, the, the crater, um, you'll get a guided walk, you'll have a helmet and a gas mask to walk around, and this is Mother Nature at her most raw. It's a privately owned, monitored, um, active volcano, and it really is an incredible um, experience of, um, of Mother Nature at her most raw. So um, this is one heli journey not to be missed. If you have clients in the central North Island coming down from Auckland, possibly um, down to Rotorua or Taupo, please try and think about this experience as a way to, for your clients to see the Bay of Plenty and uh, Great Lake Taupo from there. And of course, our beating heart of our South Island, um, our UNESCO Heritage Protected Area of Fiordland National Park. So this is Milford Sound from the air. Um, if you have clients in this area and they are experiencing the South Island, this is possibly one of the most mesmerizing um, and jaw-dropping scenes. Um, any of our sounds, Milford Sound is of course incredibly popular. There is also a bit further south, you'll see on the map, Doubtful Sound, which is even bigger, and Dusky Sound, which is even bigger than that. So from Queenstown or Tiana um, or even Wanaka, your clients can really experience some incredible scenery if you can um, encourage your clients to do a heli trip in any of these regions from any of your properties within 10 minutes of Queenstown, you can be in some of the most mesmerizing landscape. So some really key um, heli opportunities across New Zealand. It's a common mode of transport um, and I'd really recommend it for any clients. Moving on, um, another real key theme obviously of any journey to New Zealand, particularly for our European travelers, uh, is um, getting to understand and immerse themselves in some of the wildlife. Um, some of the areas in New Zealand, I think particularly on the eastern coast um, of the South Island, um, here you'll see um, Akaroa, um, and moving on 
you'll see Kaikoura. So this is a really incredible area. Kaikoura in particular is, um, has been labeled by National Geographic as the, the marine Serengeti um, of the world. Kaikoura has a unique ecosystem um, with an ocean canyon just a couple of miles offshore. What that means is that your clients within um, 10 minutes in a helicopter or maybe um, a small plane or even on a boat journey um, on Kaikoura's coast can um, see some of the most magnificent marine life in the world. So all year round we have sperm whales um, and uh, it's a 99, pretty much 99.9% .9 guaranteed sighting of any whales. And on their migratory patterns as well, we also have orca, humpback and blue whales. So thousands of dolphins. So your clients will never be disappointed in Kaikoura. It's an incredible area. You'll see um, an amazing coastline and the Kaikoura ranges behind that. So it really is a treat for anyone um, wanting to really immerse themselves in the marine life. So you'll just find it on the east coast of our South Island and moving down through that Canterbury region. Again, this is a really key area. You have Akaroa Peninsula that you will probably be able to see on the right hand side um, of the map there, just sticking out from um, the east coast. And that's an incredible area where you'll find um, the smallest and rarest dolphin in the world. Uh, Victoria will be coming back to that with a, a very unique property in that area later in the presentation too. So from your, um, from your property, um, you'll have um, incredible marine life on your doorstep. Further south um, on the eastern coast, you'll also find Waitaki region. We have a beautiful lodge here called Penibren in Omaru. And uh, from here, you'll be able to see the uh, blue penguin colonies and an abundance of seals and um, marine life and also wildlife and bird watching stretching right through from this east coast right down to South Island, uh, to Southland and Stewart Island. A really incredible area when you come right down to the south of the South Island uh, for anyone that, um, interested in nature bird watching and really a very kind of isolated area. So this is probably the most off the beaten track part of New Zealand and it really is something really incredible to discover. So moving on to our, our third theme, if you think about um, some more luxury experiences in New Zealand, um, as much as I would encourage people to get into the air and see New Zealand from above, I would also recommend seeing New Zealand from our coast. Um, New Zealand has 15,000 kilometers of coastline. Um, the amount of sailing and cruising cannot be underestimated. It's an incredible place to be on the water. Um, the Bay of Islands, the Coromandel, the Marlborough and Fiordland, you'll see um, uh, some top tips there. Um, this is in the in the Bay of Islands at near the landing residences um, and that's a beautiful place to experience some sailing with 144 islands and also don't forget Auckland. People think of Auckland as a great city but obviously it's not one of the huge big well-known iconic cities. Um, to me the beautiful part of Auckland and the real um, key selling point of Auckland is actually the Haraki Gulf that sits um, on the coast. It's called the City of Sales Auckland and you'll see why if you ever visit um, our beautiful city. It's it's actually um, an incredible amount of islands to discover. So a really good tip for luxury clients um, would actually be to get them out past Auckland into um, a place called Wahiki Island. Um, and all of this coast from Wahiki Island through to Great Barrier Island, you might be able to see on the map right through up to Northland here. Um, some amazing places to experience and sail. It's a real common sailing route in New Zealand. So if you can do maybe a private charter, here in the Bay of Islands, you could charter um, a beautiful um, catamaran called Cool Change or Bucket List. Um, and there will be um, some follow up on the emails um, listing some of this product as well. And it's a really incredible way to get your clients to, um, I guess, experience the, the warmer kind of climates and the, the beach side of New Zealand, kayaking and um, paddle boarding and anything around um, any of these islands is incredible. But being out in the water is an absolute must. Further down in the North Island, um, it's not just our, our ocean that's incredible for sailing. We actually have some very unique product on some of our lakes as well. Lake Taupo um, is well known um, as one of our largest lake, but also Rotorua is built on um, is based on 16 lakes. And just on the edge of Lake Rotoriti, we have an incredible cruise called Pure Cruise. So you can also do half day sailing um, on Lake Rotoriti as well to put um, some of Retro's lakes into perspective, um, you can have an incredible experience like this. This is Solitaire Lodge just on one of the peninsulas of Lake Tarawera. Um, from here you could um, fly via the helipad fly out to White Island and then come back and experience maybe a half day sailing 
charter on the boat that was on the previous image. So some very unique luxury experiences to do, even in places like Rotorua, which are very well known on the tourist trail. Um, but there's some very cool um, and unique experiences in nearly all of the regions in New Zealand. So it's just about finding it and, um, and uh, talking to people like myself and Victoria, and we can give you much more information on these. Uh, on the South Island for sailing, I would probably pick out Abel Tasman and the Nelson area for some of the best. Um, Abel Tasman Charters, Wilson's, this incredible product down in this region, and it's a stunning place to be out on the water. The Abel Tasman Marine Reserve um, really does look like this. This is what your clients can expect. So if Northland is the Mediterranean of our North Island, the Abel Tasman is probably the Mediterranean of our South Island. Being out on the water here is pretty exceptional. Moving on to some of our other experiences, um, I, re I uh, mentioned at the start of this presentation that our Maori culture um, is deeply integrated um, into the lifestyle in New Zealand and it really is something that your clients should experience. So for luxury clients, if they want something a little bit more guided, maybe a guided walk um, or some of our Maori food trails at some of our lodges, um, there are some really unique experiences and some hot spots as well for this, predominantly in the North Island but throughout. In the Northland, uh, we have the Waitangi Treaty Grounds. They have a brand new museum. Um, this is the first place um, where the European settlers arrived, and there's some fantastic um, experiences to be done here. Um, it's it's a really unique area, and one I would really thoroughly recommend your clients spend a little bit of time um, indulging in some of the Maori culture here. Rotorua is obviously um, well known for our, as our heartland for Maori culture. So a day here, as well as some of the experiences we mentioned earlier, please include some of our Maori cultural experiences, um, as well as our geothermal activity here. So this is a really key area for something like this. And on the walking and hiking side, there's so much to say. It's incredibly hard to put this into a couple of minutes. Um, we have nine great walks in New Zealand, nearly 10, and we have a phenomenal amount of day walks, um, trails, hiking, and all sorts. So it lists a couple of the key ones here. Um, but there is no end to the walking and hiking. On NewZealand.com um, and on our Travel Trade website, there is a downloaded guide um, available to you um, for our nine great walks and some of our day hikes as well. So I'd really recommend after this presentation, and it will be in the follow-up email as well, having a look at our, our guided um, walking uh, uh, PDFs on New Zealand because there is such an abundance of walking to be done. And, and please remember as well that um, there are lots of inaccessible areas in, in New Zealand that people and the general um, kind of tourist routes um, don't take you. Whereas for luxury clients, heli hiking or getting out um, in some of the more isolated areas of New Zealand is actually incredibly easy. So um, within 10 minutes like f uh, from your property, you can do a heli hike in some of the most remote wilderness um, and unique spaces in New Zealand. So heli hiking, um, heli e-biking even is incredibly popular. So bear this in mind, what it will do is take you into some of our um, most incredible areas. For here, we, we picked out Mount Cook because there are some phenomenal walks and hikes in this area. Um, it's obviously our our, our largest mountain and, um, and the pride and joy of New Zealand. But um, for anyone wanting to walk and hike this area or heli hike or something, um, there are some really unique experiences to be done in this area. Um, adventure um, doesn't stop at the, the incredible treks and hikes we have. So for um, anyone wanting to do some guided um, cycling um, or guided um, experiences, um, uh, that have a, a bit of a more adventurous feel, um, this is incredibly possible in New Zealand. So if you look at any of our um, our cycling, um, please have, also have a look at some of our downloadable material on traveltrade.com um, and for, on newzealand.com we have a great guide to all the amazing cycling uh, routes in New Zealand. About 70% of New Zealand cycling is probably off-road. So whether that's off-roading or full-on mountain biking, there are some incredible areas um, for that. We also have our river jets. Um, we have our incredible glaciers. Uh, there is no end to the experiences that you can do in New Zealand. And obviously the key hotspots, everybody's very familiar with Queenstown and there is literally nothing you can't do um, in Queenstown. There are incredible um, things, everything from um, the typical bungee jumps through to the um, skydiving, sailing, um, but mostly um, th being the, the centre of ad adventure, I think, probably in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, the beauty for luxury clients is that within 10 minutes of Queenstown, which you can see um, in the, the middle of this picture here, you can be on the mountaintop, you can be on a glacier, you can be walking, hiking, cycling, 
even e-biking some of the most remote areas. So there's some really amazing products to be seen um, and to do um, from this area. So please bear it in mind for anyone that wants a little bit more of an adventurous um, time in their, their New Zealand holiday. Wanaka is probably the more, um, I guess, slightly more laid back version of Queenstown. Um, you'll see it just um, north of Queenstown on the map there. Um, lake Wanaka is a, a beautiful lake. Um, so for, again, for anything similar to kayaking, but walking and trekking um, and cycling and um, getting out into the Mount Aspiring National Park, which is a phenomenal area of New Zealand. Um, there is a beautiful property here called Minaret Station, which is only accessible by heli. For luxury clients, this is probably one of the most epic experiences that they could do. They would be in the heart um, of the Mount Aspiring um, overnight with a complete star show. Um, and this is a real adventure destination. So please bear um, anything in this area in mind as well. And Lake Taupo, if, if Queenstown is the adventure center of the south, um, a lot of people would probably say that Lake Taupo is the um, adventure capital of the North Island. So Lake Taupo, to put New Zealand into perspective, is roughly about the same size as Singapore. It's our largest lake. And, uh, and Singapore and New Zealand have the same size population, 5 million. So effectively, um, you can kind of understand the, the, the vast amount of landscape that New Zealand has to offer when you think about the size of Lake Taupo. Um, and there is no end to the adventure you can do in this region. The whole of the central North Island is incredible for mountain biking, hiking, walking. We have uh, New Zealand's most popular day walk at the edge of uh, the southern edge of Lake Taupo on the Tongariro Crossing. Um, and of course, being on the water on Lake Tapo is an incredible experience as well. So plenty of adventure to have in this region if you were to pick a hotspot for your clients for uh, a more adventurous um, part of the North Island itinerary. And then another key experience for, for luxury clients as well as, um, as more of the relaxation side of New Zealand is of course the food and wine. New Zealand is, is really making a name for itself um, on the food scene as well. So um, the, um, a lot of the luxury clients that go to New Zealand and experience New Zealand's higher end properties will um, be familiar with our farm to fork um, ethos. So a lot of the lodges would have and um, have their produce from within um, 20 to 100 kilometers of the, the lodge itself. So it, um, having a sustainable approach to their gastronomy is really important in New Zealand. And of course, our wine is um, known wor um, worldwide now. The New Zealand wine is a very modern world wine, and, um, and it really is um, an incredible thing to experience um, throughout your journey in New Zealand. Some key areas that we would pinpoint um, is Wahiki Island, which I mentioned earlier. If you do have clients um, coming to Auckland, Wahiki Island is just the, the 40 minutes on the ferry or a short Auckland seaplane across, which is a great experience for luxury clients. They can just hop on a plane um, and land on Wahiki Island and explore everything through from olive oil, um, olive groves, through to vineyards um, and some of our amazing restaurants on the island as well. Further south in the North Island, I would pick up Hawke's Bay. Hawke's Bay is our largest wine growing region. Um, it also has an incredible festival um, called Fork Every Year, uh, which is our food and wine festival and it's a really beautiful area to explore on um, by bicycle as well so any of the areas um, around Hawke's Bay and the vineyards is amazing but um, exploring um, more of our food and wine product here um, would be a key point of, um, of the North Island looking at Hawke's Bay. And our capital as well, Wellington. So if you have um, a client that's a real foodie, Wellington is probably our capital of the food scene. Um, it has an incredible coffee scene, um, a real emerging craft ale scene as well. Um, and it also sits very close to our Wairapa Valley. Um, there is a beautiful lodge, lodge out here called Farakoho, which um, is very close to Martinborough. And Martinborough, you'll see on the, um, on the eastern side of the map there, is a beautiful area for more wine tasting. So from Hawke's Bay down the Wairapa through to Wellington is the start of our classic New Zealand wine trail. So, so for any luxury clients really interested um, in the food and wine scene, that would be a, a really prominent area for them to discover um, and go from some of our luxury lodges um, and through some of those at the southern end of New Zealand. And of course, our, probably our best known area for uh, wine is Marlborough. So Marlborough is, um, probably produces just over 70%, I guess, of New Zealand's wine and, and also um, is a huge producer of our Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's, you'll see the ranges, um, the mountain ranges that cut through the middle and you can see them in the distance of this picture as well. And it's, a, it's a, this absolutely stunning area to explore. It's very easy and um, Blenheim being the capital of, of Marlborough, um, you can land in Blenheim by domestic airport, um, by domestic flight, or you can come in via 
the North Island on our three hour um, ferry across to the South Island through the Marlborough Sounds and land in one of the most picturesque parts of our country, um, which is just dotted by um, vines wherever you look. So this is a beautiful area to discover for luxury clients. And we have a brand new lodge in the heart of um, Marlborough Vineyards called the Marlborough Lodge. And a little bit later, Victoria will be talking to you about a beautiful property out in the Marlborough Sounds for luxury clients as well. So um, always include Marlborough on any itinerary um, if you have a foodie um, or a wine lover um, as one of your clients. And I think the one thing that is really important to remember with New Zealand um, and people also forget to do is relax. So New Zealand is an incredible place for adventure, for high adrenaline, for walking and hiking. But um, New Zealand also has an incredible wellness um, scene as well. There, uh, there are key areas that we would recommend um, for any clients um, coming to New Zealand and Particularly, I guess, when you have had that 24-hour flight, somewhere for them to really um, have some um, rejuvenation and, and relaxation. Northland, just being 45 minutes on a small flight from Auckland or uh, a couple of hours drive um, is a really incredible area to relax because it has our beach scene. Um, it has some phenomenal islands and, of course, everything that comes with relaxation, be it... Um, I guess um, some of our, our more um, relaxation-inspired um, properties um, and also just um, being out on the water. And, and we call Northland the winterless north. So from, I guess, September right through to April, we have a much longer um, summer season in Northland. And it really is a, a key place to um, just have some downtime, particularly after that flight, um, either at the start of an itinerary or, the, or at the end. So although your clients will want to see and do a lot in New Zealand, try and remember this part of, um, of the country for a little bit more downtime. To give you an idea of some of the properties you can expect, Northland actually has a very high concentration of luxury properties. There are 32 luxury lodges across New Zealand, but much more in terms of boutique properties. But um, the beauty of them is that all they're all incredibly diverse and, and, um, and very unique. So in Northland, as an example, you have um, the lodge at Carrie Cliffs, which is um, a beautiful old um, colonial style building um, with uh, about 4,000 acres of landscape. You have the landings, which is just four villas. Um, all very different and unique villas set on the water side as well um, and Eagle's Nest which Victoria will talk to you a little bit about later. For something a little bit more um, uh, uh, I guess um, uh, uh, probably a little bit more um, off the beaten track um, but very popular for European travellers would be our Coromandel Peninsula. Um, this is a fantastic area you'll see it just on the, um, the eastern side of the map there and this is a place for um, real off the beaten track. It's got an incredible um, interior um, lush uh, forest in the Coromandel Ranges um, and a great um, eastern coast of beaches as well so really sheltered coves um, and some great kayaking to be done in this area. So for more um, kind of more on the R&R &R side and, and relaxation um, as you come down south from Auckland, this is a great area to include. And again, Abel Tasman and Nelson for um, that real beach product. Um, if you do have clients that are really wanting to see and do a lot in the, in the South Island, maybe give them some time at the end, either in Marlborough or in a region like this. And this is where they can have some downtime and really, um, uh, I guess, have a couple of days um, of just chilling out. Um, as an example, Split Apple Retreat has an incredible wellness program. Um, it's just three rooms set on the peninsula looking over our famous Split Apple Rock. Um, and this is um, a, a key example of what clients can expect if they were to have a little bit more downtime in New Zealand. And of course, New Zealand is incredible for um, special interests. So we pick up golf here um, just as, a, as an example. Um, there are probably over 300 golf courses in New Zealand. We have immense um, standard of golf courses, some very challenging courses as well. Um, this is Carrie Cliffs, which you will find in Northland. Um, and this would be um, probably voted, I think, the 16th best golf course in the world. So you can see it's an incredibly challenging course here. This is Cape Kidnappers, um, which is well known worldwide. Um, in the golf community as a, as a real must do. So if you do have clients coming to New Zealand and as well as all the other activities you can do, that the golf is something that they are really interested in. Please do remember that there are some incredibly challenging and very world 
wide known courses here. To give you an example of some of um, of what some of our luxury properties may look like, and and this is probably one with um, one of the most vast amounts of space. This is the farm at Cape Kidnappers, um, and it's their landscape here. So the owner owns all 6,000 acres that you can see in front of you here, including the golf course. The lodge is actually just on the left-hand side. So for clients coming to this lodge, they have probably a 20-minute drive from the entrance point up to the lodge. Um, and this is the type of landscape they can expect. So you have more than just the region. You have a destination in itself within your overnight stay. So when you look at some of these lodges, um, d dependent on the price tag, um, what you will always find is an incredibly um, versatile um, landscape and, and a real range of experiences within that property. So um, so it's more than just the property itself. Um, do have a look at the landscape and, and really get an understanding of some of these properties. The farm at Cape Canepas itself, you'll see um, the other view here of the actual lodge um, looking back on the coastal scene there and, and um, you'll see on the right hand side the decor of what you could expect when your clients stay there. So please do have a little look around um, our luxury lodges of New Zealand. Um, in the follow-up email we will give you more of an overview of what those um, properties look like. Um, we'll give you more detail on some of the other properties and the boutique properties and some of our private villas and residences in New Zealand as well, as well as some key details um, and some more detail on some of the experiences I've spoken about today. And to give you a bit more understanding of what some of our properties look like, um, I'd like to welcome Victoria. And Victoria will be able to talk um, in a bit more detail about some of the key regions and the properties that she looks after. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, thank you, Kate, for that presentation. That was great. Um, so, what I'm going to do just briefly is go through. Um, uh, some of the, um, a, a couple of, three of the hotels actually that we, um, I represent through my company, Fred and Mildred. They're all <clears throat> part of the um, luxury lodges of New Zealand, um, all very unique and different. So um, let's move forward to that. Um, you can see just in the um, bottom left corner, that's uh, me and my family at Eagle's Nest back in December. So um, we get we get to have a look at all the lodges and um, we're very lucky in that part. OK, so we'll start with Eagle's Nest. Um, this is up in the Northland of New Zealand where it's subtropical. It's much warmer up here. The water's lovely and warm, so it's very much about getting out and about on the water, under the water, in the water. Um, this particular image here you can see is of Rahi Moana, which is the um, uh, presidential villa, in fact. Um, so that just shows you where it is on the map, of course, um, up in the Bay of Islands, Russell. Russell is an old whaling town. Um, it's got lots of cute cafes and shops and restaurants and bars and so forth. On this um, image here, you can see the 75 acres peninsula of land, which Eagle's Nest sits on. In the foreground, you've got a big um, villa to your um, sort of left, um, or middle actually, of the picture, and that's Rahi Moana. Um, and then we have four other beautiful villas nestled in the native bush. And you can see we have private beaches around the property as well. So fantastic views looking out into the ocean to the Bay of Islands. Um, just can see if this video works, but it doesn't look like it does actually. Not coming up there. Okay. Um, another lovely image of... Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, so most people staying in the lodges um, are coming to New Zealand for maybe two, three weeks, maybe more. Um, and generally people will stay three, an average of three nights in the lodges, sometimes more, sometimes less. But what that does is it gives you an, um, it, it gives the guests uh, two full days in the region. So uh, that means one day they probably want to enjoy all the activities at the property um, and the other day take Eagle's Nest for example. Guests like to go out sailing, um, they'll go kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, they might go scuba diving, there's skydiving, there's all sorts of activities. This one in particular is one of the yachts that we use um, and guests will go and have picnics in the bays around the area and um, take a stand up paddleboard. <coughs> 
So we've got some fantastic local beaches to um, enjoy in the local area. Now, um, where Eagle's Nest sits, um, often people sort of think they have to be very active all the time in New Zealand. I think Kate mentioned this as well. Not at all. We have some wonderful beaches. So this really can be the beach part of people's holiday. They can come and just um, do that kind of tropical beach area. There's no need to have to go to the South Pacific. Um, you have it all here. So as we run, we're run as a villa property, um, we have the five different villas, but we have a full chef team, we have um, a full um, management team, activity team, the full team there to look after everybody. In terms of food and beverages, guests can have a chef come and cook a meal in their villa for them, lots of local fresh seafood and, and wonderful local wines. Or we offer complimentary return transfers down, um, down to Russell, um, so guests can go out and enjoy the pubs and bars there. Um, this is Rahi Moana, as I've mentioned before. That's the presidential villa. It has 320 degree views. It sleeps up to um, eight people. You have this wonderful 25 meter long swimming pool along the front with incredible views again. And all of the bedrooms have been designed to really maximize those views, um, looking out to the ocean and the rest of the Bay of Islands. This is the view from one of the, um, one of the bedrooms looking out. Doesn't get much better than that. So one of the other four villas, Sacred Space Villa, this one, this is great for families. In fact, the whole Eagle's Nest property is a wonderful option for families because it really gives the clients that um, option to spread out, unpack. They've got their own garden, their own swimming pool, as well as being fully serviced. Um, all very modern, very airy, wonderful little kitchens, and they're fully equipped with breakfast provisions. Um, so guests can help themselves um, to breakfast, of course. Um, generally, they'll go out for lunch, and we can do dinner for them um, in their villa. First Light Villa, this is our one-bedroom villa. Um, great for honeymooners. Again, you can see the fantastic views you've got of uh, sunset, in fact. Um, fully equipped with the kitchens, living rooms, dining rooms, and so forth. And this one comes with a hot tub in the beautiful native bush gardens. The Irie Villa, this is three bedrooms. Again, wonderful for a family, but we also have two bedroom options here, um, prices, so we can sort of close off one of the bedrooms. And Eagle Spirit Villa, the final one of the five villas. This is again surrounded by native bush, three bedrooms and um, lovely swimming pool looking out the, the views again. Take me there now, hey? So that's Eagle's Nest, a great option up in the Northland, um, lots of lovely beaches in that area, getting out on the water, sailing, very, very high standard, um, wonderful for families as well as couples alike, and really considered one of the, um, one of the most luxurious of um, the lodges in New Zealand. Right, so now we move down to the South Island, um, to a lovely property, it's a resort in fact, down um, in the Marlborough Sounds. So we are here in the top of the South Island. You can see the green area on the map of New Zealand. And uh, just, you can easily take the ferry over from Wellington down to Picton. And then I don't think I have a way of, can they see the arrow? Maybe, I don't know if you can see my arrow or not, but I'm pointing to where Bay of Many Coves um, is um, so it's just sort of right out in the sounds. Now this property is uh, boat access only, so we can organise your boats for you, or your um, tour operator can organise that for you, no problem. It's part of the adventure. How nice is it to stay somewhere where there's no road access? Very cool. So as you arrive into Bay of Many Coves, this will be looking up from the boat dock um, on arrival, and you can see all the villas nestled in the native bush. I think this property is about 750 hectares of, of wonderful native bush, and there's some fabulous walks as you walk up um, to the top and, and to the lookout. This would be a typical view from one of the apartments. Um, we have 11, one, two, and three bedroom apartments. All of the apartments have uh, little kitchenette areas, they have a separate lounge area, and uh, just depending on the number of bedrooms, every bedroom has an ensuite. All beautiful views as well, and, and again, lovely and modern. But really here, it's about, it's about your environment. You know, your view is, is um, looking out to the water and the hillside around you, um, so very well equipped. 
We offer, um, we have a helipad, um, so it's easy to get in and out, and guests can go and explore the Marlborough wine region from here very easily by boat or by helicopter. Um, they can also go and explore the Queen Charlotte track, which is runs alongside um, the the resort itself. Guests can hike up and, and do a day tour, half day tour, part of the Queen Charlotte track, which is one of the most popular um, hikes in New Zealand. Otherwise, guests go out here and they go kayaking, they go um, stand up paddle boarding, they're complimentary, they go out sailing, enjoy the boats in the area, fishing, of course, as well. We've got wonderful waterfalls on the property. And wildlife here, the sea life, the wildlife is just beautiful. We regularly, in fact, most days, guests will go out and see dolphin in the area. And we regularly have orca come and um, seals, um, some wonderful sea life, bird life as well, kiwis, um, kakapo, tui. So the, the listening to the bird song is just fantastic. Lovely view shot again from one of the apartments. This one's also a video, but I don't think the videos are working, so it's fine. Oh, who's going to see? Okay. Um, so you can see the boat dock there where guests would arrive. We have a cafe. We have a fine dining restaurant um, where we offer seven-course degustation menus with wines. And we have a guest lounge on the bottom level there, which is where we serve breakfast. And that's just for the guests because the cafe is, in actual fact, open to yachties from the local area who can come in and, and stop for lunch. So it's a great way for the guests to meet the local people as well. And that's looking at the restaurant and the... Um, one of my favorite images here, this is out on the dock. So the stars at nighttime here are amazing. There's no other towns or villages around. So as a result, you can, you can see the Milky Way, you can see the galaxies. It's just amazing to do some stargazing. Okay, so now I'm going to move just slightly south um, to Annandale. This is a 4,000 acre working farm. It's uh, an hour's drive from Christchurch International Airport, and it is out on Banks Peninsula. Um, this is also a villa property. It has four villas this time. This, as you can see in the um, larger map area, that is the whole 4,000 acres, and it's a coastal farm. So you have um, the four villas, Annans Annandale Homestead, Shepherd's Cottage, Seascape, and Scrubby Bay. And the farm track runs right along the coast out to the other um, properties. Um, that's not going to work, is it? Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so these are the four villas. Um, homestead in the top left corner. This is five bedrooms. It can sleep up to 10 guests. We also have prices for um, uh, two bedrooms and three bedrooms. So it's a really flexible product. Um, we have Scrubby Bay, which is in, in its own private bay, and that can sleep up to 14 guests. That's in the top right-hand corner. Great for families. Um, you know, you get your own beach, your own bay. Um, huge amount of fun to be had there. Bottom left, we have Shepherd's Cottage, and this is a one-bedroom, very sort of kiwi, rustic, outdoor bath, very cute and cozy with a fireplace inside, and you're right in the middle of the farm. So you've got sheep and cattle wandering by. It's a really lovely um, property, that one. And then bottom right, you have Seascape, and this is really the iconic, um, incredible for a honeymoon couple, romantic couple, um, really people looking to get away from it all. It's, it's in its own private bay right out in the end of the farm and um, gosh what a, a stunning unique place to, to stay. So in terms of food and beverages here um, we have a chef team and the chef team will come out to all of the villas. They will cook a meal in the villas otherwise we offer a more informal um, uh, meal option where we drop the meal into the fridge of the villas and the chef can cook, cook um, the, the clients can just cook it up when they're, own, when they're ready in their own time. Um, we do hampers, picnic hampers out on the farm. So again, people might come here and go, what am I going to do when I'm there once I've enjoyed the remoteness and, and read my books? Well, there's lots and lots to do here. So getting out on the farm, hiking, mountain biking. We have several boat options where guests can go and do uh, nature tours, see the, sea ga uh, the gannets, the sea lions. We have a dolphin here called the Hector's Dolphin, which um, is native to the area. So you've got a very, very good chance of going and spotting some of them. Um, so definitely getting out on the water. 
kayaking as well, paddle boarding, lots of different options there. But we even do clay pigeon shooting, yoga classes, art classes, cooking classes, you name it. We have a full activity um, brochure that we can send out to you as well. So lots and lots to do on the property, as well as helicopter tours out into the Canterbury region, Banks Peninsula and Akaroa. It's a great shot of, of some kayaking that you can do there. So Annandale, again, sits as a villa property, but fully serviced. So your clients have everything looked after for them um, and a really great option with lots of um, flexibility. So now I'm going to pass you back to Kate Fenton, um, who um, will round up the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Um, thank you um, all for listening. I hope you've had a really um, good uh, taster of what some of the properties in New Zealand might look like. Um, there is um, a real selection and real versatile range of luxury lodges of New Zealand, but also um, boutique properties and villa residences, and also some of our, our guest houses. Not everybody in a journey of New Zealand will um, will blow their budget and, and be across all of these luxury lodges, but it's just to give you a taster. And the beauty of it is that you can really find something um, that's right for your clients because there is such an incredible selection. So if we can, um, what I'll just do is, uh, there are a couple of questions that have come through. Um, uh, somebody has asked if they will get the presentation, and yes, of course, we'll be able to send that to you. Um, and the follow-up, uh, within the follow-up, you'll also have um, a good um, amount of detail on some of the properties, but also the experiences too. We'll also send the links through of our travel trade site, our NewZealand.com site, where you can find your agent listings, um, and also some of the content that we have available. Um, so uh, there is a wealth of um, imagery and detail coming to you on an email after this. Somebody has also asked um, if there are heli connections from Tiano, um, Dunedin or Invercargill down to Stewart Island. Um, yes, there are. Um, there are a numerous um, amount of operators, um, particularly in Queenstown, um, but also Fjordland helicopters and a few more outside near Tiano. Um, all these regions are accessible. Um, the helicopter um, uh, experiences are, are very common in New Zealand and there are a couple that will get you down to Stewart Island from those locations as well. Uh, it's a big day, um, it's, a, it's uh, obviously um, a, a good distance but it's an incredible experience to do on a, on a full day tour. Um, from Queenstown or Tiano or somewhere like that. Um, so I think um, a few of you are also asking some from, um, for some of the pictures from the lodges and also the destination. Uh, so as well as our travel trade, um, travel trade site and NewZealand.com, we also have visuals.NewZealand.com. On there you can register and you can download any of our imagery and assets as well. Um, there are um, a lot of resources and tools for you and they will be coming up in the emails following this. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I um, wish you uh, the best of luck in the World Cup this afternoon. We will be um, listening on our tour of Germany and we're right behind you. Um, thank you for taking the time today um, and thank you to Lobster for hosting this as well. I will just pass you over to Roman to complete and um, I look forward to talking to you all on email. Thank you. So, thank you, Kate. Um, we bedanken uns ganz herzlich für Ihre Teilnahme heute. Und wir hoffen sehr, dass unsere Präsentation ja dazu beigetragen hat, dass Sie zumindest eine neue Quelle der Inspiration für Sie und für Ihre Kunden ähm, entdeckt haben. Und wir werden uns natürlich sehr freuen, wenn Sie auch nächstes Mal dabei sind bei äh, unserem neuen Webinar. Also das Datum und das Thema stehen noch nicht fest, aber Sie werden von uns ja auch wie, wie auch immer die ähm, Einladung rechtzeitig bekommen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Danke. Tschüss.